Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Wadonia. I'm from Charlottesville, Virginia. This week we're going to be talking about amplitude envelopes and the synthesizer called Zebralet. If you're like me, you watch Loudon's lectures about synthesis and you were like, okay, that makes sense. And then you open any one of the free synthesizers that were recommended and we're like, what the F? Uh, there's just knobs and numbers and all everything all over the place. Um, read through the manual, have a little bit better idea. The thing I seem to understand most is uh, amplitude envelopes, so I'm going to talk about that. So an amplitude envelope is basically a modulator that changes the amplitude of a track as the track is playing. Though this can be initiated by a wide variety of events, oftentimes that happens when a note is played on a synth. In that case, every time a note is played, the amplitude is changed according to some control that we have set. And th those primary controls are attack, sustain, delay, and release, ASDR. You can see on the left side of the screen an image by Loudon describing what those four things are. Uh, so using the key press example, when you press the key, attack is how quickly the sound rises to its peak. Uh, decay is how quickly it then, or what well, the time it takes to fall back to a level, like a plateau level, of which is the sustain. Um, how, what the sustain is like what the level is at that plateau. And then finally release is as when we unpress that note, um, how long does it take to go back to zero. So I have Reaper open here, it's kind of hidden behind Zebralet. Uh, I'm going to show you a few common configuration types for amplitude envelopes and why you'd use them. So uh, you're, you're kind of bombarded here with, uh, with knobs and such, like I said. Uh, the things we care about in the bottom left here with A, D, S, and R. Uh, so uh, five, I'm going to go through five common configurations and let you hear them. The first is switch, uh, and this is where we have no attack, delay, or release, just a sustain of 100% with... Um, so with note on and off. There you go. Um, so you can hear it kind of just goes on and it goes off. And this is obviously good for sounds where you just want that. You don't want any sort of fade in or fade out or anything like that. Uh, the second is percussive. So I'm going to pull this thing up. Um, and this is where we have... Uh, no attack or sustain, and the decay is about the same as release. So there's a quick strike and then a smooth decrease in amplitude down to zero. So let's pick up the decay and then the release and then um, give this a play. So you can see quick strike, and a somewhat quick release, uh, but smooth. Um, this is good for uh, percussion or plucked instruments where you want that sort of s sound. Um, the third is damp percussive. Uh, I'm just going to pull that open. Uh, and this is with no attack, sustain, or release, just decay. So I'm going to pull down release. Um, and then we'll play this. So this is similar to the percussive, except uh, when uh, you press down to get an initial spike. The sound gradually falls off, but when you let go, it just stops because <clears throat> we don't have a release. Uh, and this is like very similar to kind of piano sound if, you, if that's what you're going for. Uh, the fourth is blowing or bowing sound. Um, so let me pull that open here, um, which has a quick strike for its attack, a slight decay, a long sustain, and a slight release. So let me just set this up here. So a little bit of everything, basically. A um, little bit of this, and then a long sustain. So let's do this. Okay, so, <coughs> sorry. This makes for a nice long sound after a really quick initial spike. Um, obviously good for blowing or bowing instruments like uh, trumpet or violin. Um, the, the fifth is a quirk, which is no, uh, no attack or sustain, uh, a slight decay, and a long release. So let's do this. Uh, I couldn't get this to work exactly right. I'll let you hear it. Um, but uh, basically, if you play a short note, you'll get a long sound and vice versa because of how the release works. Um, anyhow, I, I'd like to be able to go explain that further, but I just don't have, <laughs> have I just only have a little bit of left time. So anyways, I hope you found this useful in getting started with amplitude envelopes and zebralette, and uh, thanks for listening. All right, bye.